Hi, I'm Gregor Weiss. I'm a professor of finance here at Leipzig University and I want to welcome you to this lecture series on sustainable finance. In this video we'll talk about responsible sustainable investing in contrast to pure shareholder value maximization as we know it from traditional management classes. So we're actually going to start now our discussion of the different topics in sustainable finance. In the last video we've looked at the syllabus and now we're going to start by asking the basic question can you be responsible and can you be a sustainable investor at the same time when you are also trying to maximize your shareholder value. So are these two things that contradict each other or can you actually maximize shareholder value and be a responsible, sustainable investor at the same time? So the learning outcomes should be that after the session you should be able to explain the social and environmental challenges that we are changing. Uh, unfortunately there will be new challenges um, coming along as well and uh, coming on top of that but you should be able to know the main challenges that uh, society faces today. You should also be able to list and to understand the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, uh, which lay the framework for uh, a lot that is going on in sustainable finance now. We will also analyze the main functions of the financial system and assess how to apply them to sustainability. Of course, if we are going to talk about sustainable finance, we need to know what the financial system is all about, what it's for, what the main actors are, what its main functions are. And at the end, you should be able to explain the various stages of sustainable finance because this is not something that has uh, suddenly appeared out of the blue. It has developed over time and there are different stages to the development of sustainable finance. Now to start economic models were obviously developed in the age of resource abundance. When we had natural resources that were plentiful we weren't even aware about carbon emissions and even then carbon emissions when we uh, realized that we are polluting the atmosphere not just with dirt and aerosols but we are also polluting the atmosphere with carbon dioxide and other uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, even then those emissions were so limited and because they are usually not poisonous, um, economic agents didn't really care about those emissions. So as a result, no environmental concerns were factored into these very early models of economics. We only had labor and capital as the two main ingredients, uh, the two main factors and input factors that were used in these economic models. And as a result, economic analysis was usually um, void of any discussion of um, environmental concerns. Later on um, we did have um, discussions on uh, environmental pollution but usually these discussions were centered about pollution in the sense that um, um, companies were polluting the environment with poison, where um, they were um, directing some kind of uh, waste into the nature, into nature. So that's what uh, some uh, economic models actually had. But um, in the very start, at the very start, we only had labor and capital. And most importantly, even though we had environmental economics and of course energy economics, we never until let's say 10-15 years ago we never talked about the impact of finance and the financial market on uh, these environmental concerns. So this is actually new. Also financial theory does not account value to natural resources beyond their near-term cash flows. So uh, there is not um, a benefit or a negative effect uh, attached to um, natural resources based on their effect on climate, for example. So these models are still widely used, but they are no longer tenable because uh, potential fatal depletion of resources is ignored. And not just the depletion of resources, but also the depletion of our um, budget of carbon emissions our atmosphere can hold. We're now in a transition to a low carbon and more circular economy. 
to overcome these environmental challenges. And as a result, not just our economic models, but also finance has to account for this transition and has ideally to support this transition of our economy. Now, why should we do this? Because an early transition allows for an adjustment of the production and consumption patterns of industries, of firms and households. Whereas a late transition will cause sudden shocks and lead to stranded assets, which will have lost their productive value. We'll have a definition of stranded assets later on, but just to give you an idea what a stranded asset is, for example, if you were to buy the stocks of a petrol company, of a gas company, of an oil company, you would probably know, even worse actually for coal, you would know that this is not a business model for the future. Oil, gas, coal, are probably products of the past and they will phase out. So if you buy the stocks of a company that is only invested in oil and coal, you will be left stranded with those assets because these assets will deteriorate in value. That's what we call stranded assets. Now, many natural resource companies are still in denial, promising a late transition. And these companies will, of course, face huge problems uh, not just in mass production, uh, maybe even long working hours um, and underpayment child labor. That's something we already see today. But these companies, for example, in the coal and gas industry, they will see more regulation, more pressure from um, environmental activists. They will see more pressure coming from investors. So a lot of problems will arise if uh, we enter transition too late. And of course, those companies that uh, start an early transition, they might be the companies of the future. To guide this transition towards a sustainable and inclusive economy, the United Nations developed the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which will require behavioral change. And what they say is that sustainable development is an integrated concept with three aspects, economic, social and environmental. Sustainable development means that current and future generations have their sources needed, such as food, but also water, healthcare, and energy without stressing the Earth's system processes. You can already see that it's not just about climate change. Uh, sustainable finance, sustainable development is actually about, um, well, sustainability in all aspects uh, of the economy. It's about uh, economic aspects, it's about the environment, but it's also about social aspects and governance issues, like, for example, workers' health, uh, worker safety, and so on. Well, to give you an idea what uh, momentum this has uh, actually taken on, you just need to think about Greta Thunberg, uh, probably one of the most famous climate activists uh, of our time, uh, who started the, uh, the school strike for climate a couple of years ago, and uh, what has now become Fridays for Future, and has evolved into several other climate activist groups. But as you can see, uh, because of her activism, um, the whole fight against uh, climate change has gained much, much momentum, not just from um, politicians, but also from business leaders who uh, think more about uh, what to do uh, to fight climate change. Now, at this point, if this is an in-class lecture, I would ask you, uh, what do you think? Why should finance contribute to sustainable development? You can take this um, question, well, home, if you're not at home right now, and think about how the financial market, how finance as a subject and as a field in economics can contribute uh, to increasing sustainability and more concretely, how to change, um, how to fight climate change. So let's start with a very basic definition of sustainable finance. Sustainable finance looks at how finance understood as both investing and financing. Finance has always, even though the name suggests otherwise, finance has always two sides to the same coin. It's always how to spend money, investing, and where to get the money 
that you want to spend financing. So financing, investing, how finance interacts with economic, social and environmental issues. So how finance interacts with sustainable development of countries, uh, companies and households. It's many words, one concept. It's basically sustainable finance is the general term. It started out as socially responsible investing or just responsible investing. It's obviously a part of sustainable development. Um, responsible investment is closely related to socially responsible investing, but now it has turned a little bit more towards green finance, climate risk, climate finance, and if it's just about investing, and if it's investing with an impact, it's also ESG investing. So environmental, social and governments, governance issues, uh, that's ESG. Sustainable finance now assists in making strategic decisions on the trade-offs between sustainable goals. So, of course, you want to start and investors want to make money. It's, of course, about shareholder maximization. But investors can exert influence on the corporates in which they invest. If you buy the stocks of a green company, in contrast to the stocks of a coal company, you're obviously giving financial resources to the green company in contrast to the brown company. So this is influence that you have as an investor. The long-term investors can steer corporates towards sustainable business practices. You can um, use your influence, for example, in the management board or in the oversight boards. Um, and finance is also good at pricing risk for valuation purposes. So if, for example, you sell your stocks of a coal company and you buy the stocks of a green company, then not only are you exerting influence by your financing decision, but if all investors do this, the pricing that takes place on the financial market will signal to investors, hey, this company is doing well, this other company is not so doing well and it will be put out of business. So that's the pricing risk and that's the pricing signal that's coming from the financial market. Finance helps dealing with the inherent uncertainty about environmental issues, such as the impact of carbon emissions on climate change. Well, that's true. Um, you can try to use the financial market, not just to steer away your financing resources from a brown company to a green company, but also, if you see that you are still invested in brown company, you might have the instruments available on the financial market to limit your risk and to make sure that you uh, exit those brown companies in an organized manner. Such leads to finance and sustainability both look at the future. You are interested in making investment in the future. So why does sustainability matter? Economic models were, again, developed at the onset of the Industrial Revolution, Adam Smith and others, in the 19th century. So labor and capital were the only two production factors that were scarce and what they were used to optimize in economic production while nature and its services were freely available and also free to pollute. So the Industrial Revolution had profound impacts on the economy, you know, the economy, society and the global ecosystem, whereas human society became largely dependent on fossil fuels and other non-renewable resources. Now, technological advances dependent on fossil fuels, starting with a steam engine, allowed unprecedented production of consumer goods, spurring economic and population growth. So we need to move on from the empty world where we have an abundance of goods and services from nature, where we were able to use the steam engine, uh, early production sites, uh, where we polluted the environment, to use technological advances dependent on fossil fuels and other raw materials, massive production, economic and population growth, to maybe a full world scenario where we have limits to growth. This is the idea that was put forward by the Club of Rome. And of course, this is the discussion that is heavily influenced by politics, left wing, right wing, the question where there's a limit to growth, where we maybe even should degrowth. But um, I don't want to get into this discussion right now. This will come later. But of course, we have to see that 
um, we have more population, we have had high growth, we have um, maybe overproduction and overconsumption of certain goods, uh, in contrast to the empty world of the 19th century. So yes, in certain aspects there are of course limits to growth and we need to think about these limits. Okay, so this was the first introduction. You now have uh, an idea what sustainable finance is. We'll get more information on that later on. And in the next video, we'll continue with historical cornerstones.